Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 75. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Business 210 Chapter 7. If you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 7 website. Hey, in this video, we want to talk about point estimates. And we want to see how to do a simple random sample on a little bit larger data set. In our last video, we did it just on a two columns. Now, the first thing is I have some uh, data here. Region that we made the sale, the customer, whether they used a coupon, and the sales. And I think if I click there and control down arrow, I can see there's uh, 600 records. And so I'd like to first take a sample with sample size, 20. Sample size 20. And then we'll see how to calculate our point estimates. We're going to see a point estimate for mean average, uh, a proportion, and standard deviation. Now the first thing is we need to link in our last video to extract 20 records from this data set. I'm going to create a random number between 1 and 600. Notice this data set has which is convenient to, to extract the numbers 1, 2, 3 for each. Uh, that's a, the number of the record. So we're going to create our formula just like we did last video. Equals int. That is the int function, integer. It takes any number with a bunch of decimals and just gives you the int part of it. It always goes down. So the int of 2.2 .2 is 2. The int of minus 2.2 .2 would be minus 3, because int always goes down. All right, and then we also saw last video rand. Rand is a function that generates, uh, with equal proportion, any number between 0 and 1, up to 15 digits. Now, because we want the whole numbers 1 to 600, we have to multiply our rand, like we saw in last video, times 600, and then add 1. The uh, this times this will give us a number between 0 and 599, but we always want to go from 1 to 600, so we have to add that one. Close parentheses. Uh, if you want to uh, see the details of exactly how this works, watch the last video, number uh, 74. Now, I'm going to uh, click and drag this down. That will randomly generate numbers between 1 and 600. F9 key is the number that will randomly select the numbers. Now, in last video, we also saw how to use the VLOOKUP. Well, we're going to use it again here, except for we have a bunch of columns to extract. Right? The way the VLOOKUP works is it takes the three, let's say the 10, you put it into your brain, you go over to this big table, you race down the first column until you see your 10, and then you jump over to whatever column, either 2, 3, 4, 5. In our case, for region, it would be column 2. If we were extracting the customer name for re uh, record number 10, we'd want the 1, 2, 3 column. For our Used, Q, uh, used coupon, yes or no, we'd have to go to record 10, race down here, match that, and go one, two, three columns over. So you ready? Here's how it works. Equals V lookup. V lookup is just like we do it with our brains. You've got to put the lookup value into the V lookup's brain, just like we would put it in ours comma, and then just like we would do, we go over to some table. Well, VLOOKUP doesn't know where to look until you tell it. So I'm going to highlight the whole table. Do not, for VLOOKUP, put the field names. Control Shift Down Arrow, and then F4 to lock it. Now, comma, and the column index number. For region, it's 2, because this is 1, this is 2. So we're going to put a 2 here. I'll show you a better way to do that in just a moment. Finally, we're either looking up approximate matches like for tax tables. We don't have tax tables. We want an exact match, so I'm going to put false or 0. That means it'll find exactly 390. Control Enter. Now I'm going to copy this over like this, and of course it's uh, uh, not going to work. Uh, F4, F2, this right here, in fact, here's the way to tell. You go to the last one, you go, oh, look, I forgot to lock it. Now, uh, in order to do this, uh, we could lock this using our F4 key. Oh, that would be terrible. What that would mean is we'd actually have to do 20 different formulas. Because watch this. This would work when I copy over here and then change this to 3. 
right? So East Trader Joe's got it right. But what happens when we copy it down? That is still locked on that. So if there was a way, if there was a way to have this G5 locked when copying this way, but not when you co copy it down, that would be preferable. Where there, well, there is. Let's try it. Put your cursor right there and hit your F4 key again. No way. And then hit it again. Then again. Notice it's cycling through. I'm hitting F4. It's like a merry-go-round. It's cycling through all four different types of cell references. Now, when we started this class, I told you we're only going to be required to know that one, relative, and that one, absolute. But for most uh, intermediate and advanced formulas with cell references, you really need to know all four. So I'm going to stop with the dollar sign just locked in front of the column reference G. That means when you go this way, it's locked. But when you copy it down across the rows, that 5 will move to a 6, which is exactly what we want. Let's try it. I'm going to copy it down a few. And then I'm going to look at that. It moved to G7. But watch this. When we copy it over like this, did it is it locked on G5? Is it locked on G5? You betcha. Now, what we have to do here before we copy them down is we need to edit. And this is uh, 1, 2, 3. So we have to put a 3 here. Tab. And then I have to put a 4 here. Tab. And then I have to put a 5 here. And now I can copy this down just like that. Oops, down to there. And then highlight that one and double click and send it down. And just like that, we can go down to the last one and check it. Sure enough, it got the 5 and the G24 is looking at the right place. Now, uh, I'm not going to ask you on the test how to do this, but I got to show you this because this is like what you do when you're out there in the real world. And I'm going to show you one other trick too because it's annoying. I don't like when I have a table of formulas and I have to go 1, 2, 3, 4 different ones and edit them and copy them down. If there's a way to get a 2 here and then a 3 here and then a 4 here automatically, would you do it? You betcha you would. Here's how you do it. I'm going to highlight I'm going to put this one into edit mode. F2 and I'm going to highlight this too and I'm going to use the columns function, columns with an s, columns. And I'm going to highlight two cells, this one and that one. And I'm going to lock this one only in front of the column reference G. Now, what does this do? I'll prove it to you in just a moment. Columns. It says, how many columns are there? Well, G, H. How many are there? That's two. But notice, this one's going to be locked and that one's not. So when I copy this over, the H will turn to an I. Then the I will turn to a J. Let's try it. Control Enter. Whoops. Click, click OK. I've entered too many arguments. I need to close parentheses right there. Whew. Now, that one right there, if you don't believe it, we can hit F9, right? And give us it'll give us a 2 there. I'm going to control Z to undo that and then control enter. Now I'm going to copy this over. Double click and send it down. Now let's just try it. Uh, let's click right here, and I'm going to double click it, and I'm going to highlight this columns part here. Notice the H went to I, but I'm going to highlight it and hit the F9 key just to, oh, look at that. It turned to a 3. I'm going to click Escape because I don't want to leave that hard coded there. And I'm going to come over here, highlight that same little columns, and hit the F9 key. Is that a 4? You betcha. Escape because you don't want to hard code it in. And then finally there. F9, and sure enough, it's a 5. So that is a good formula for uh, selecting. Now, there are other t types of formulas for, uh, there's lots of them. I have lots of videos at YouTube about how to do e extract samples for exactly what we're going to do. All right, so we've extracted our sample. Let's scroll over here. The only, just for you in the class that are taking the test, the one back here, this is the only one I'll, I'll ask you. might ask you how to do something simple like this. It's a bunch of numbers and names. I won't ask you how to do this one, even though this is one you'll be doing in the real world. All right, let's scroll over here. Now, point estimate. What is that? Oh, well, we already studied that exact term early in this class, a point estimate, let's say for uh, a mean, that's the mean right there, it's a sample mean. 
it is the best estimate a lot of times we can get for the population mean. So point estimate means the, the sample mean is pointing towards the population mean and saying, I, I'm sort of close to this one. I may not be exactly it because it's a sample, but I'm the best point estimate we have. Now let's go ahead and calculate our mean equals average. And I'm going to highlight this is for sales. So I'm just going to highlight this column right here, Control Shift Down Hour and F4. Enter. Now I want to calculate our standard deviation equals STDEV. This is a sample, so we don't use the P1. We use that, that one there. And I'm going to come over here and calculate this sample stand. Whoops, click OK. Boop, right there. Same thing for that same sales data. Control shift down our F4 and then enter. Okay, so we've calculated our mean and standard deviation. Now I have a little problem here. I had my mean here and my standard deviation here. What I'd like to do is uh, <laughs> move these around. Here's a, a trick. I'll, I'll fix this before I, I publish it. If you have something highlighted like this, if you point to the edge and you see that move cursor, if you click and drag it, it'll move it. But if you're holding shift, and now this is a hard trick, don't try this at home if you're worried about messing up your spreadsheet. You can, I'm holding shift, you click and see now there's a little uh, vertical gray bar. If you can get it, your gray bar to show up exactly where you want, like that right there, if you let go of your mouse now, that's how you move it. It actually takes this, puts it exactly where it was, and moves that one over. Now I'll fix that so that the mean is set up next to the population mean and standard deviation. But there you go. Now look, uh-oh, look at the point estimate for the uh, sales. A lot bigger than the population mean. I'm going to hit F9. Oh yeah, right. These are all randomized, so our point estimates will change too. These, I just did um, a mean and a standard deviation of our actual population data over there, all 600. Now I want to do one other point estimate here, and we have this column. Oh yeah, did they use a coupon or not? Now we have a, a sample of 20, and I want to use, how do we count 20s over here? How do we count the 20s? Oh, count if. We learned that in chapter 2 and uh, other chapters. So equals count if. Count if, and it needs the range. That's all of the elements here. Control shift down arrow. And I'm going to hit F4 just because that jumps the screen back up. We don't really need those dollar signs here, but they won't hurt. Comma, and what's the criteria? Oh, it's yes. Now, what does this do? We know from earlier chapters, this just gives us count. Well, I'll enter, right? It gives me four, and if I hit my um, F9 key, you can see it'll change. Now, what do we need to do? We need to compare that to all of them. Well, that all of them is our sample size, so I'm going to hit division bar and go get my sample number right there. Okay, so that is how you do a point estimate from raw data. That is a proportion. Now, F9, F9, we have our point estimates, our population. Now, the difference between these, we learned when we did standard deviation, is called um, deviation. This is not called sample error. This is called sampling error. Now, watch this here. I'm going to highlight all of these, and in the light-colored cell, I'm going to hit F2. And I'm going to edit this, ING, delete. And now, because I have them all highlighted, I'll control enter and populate all the cells with that edited text. Now, our sampling error, we can do our trick here, highlight all the cells, and in the light colored cell right there, say equals. A, this is our X bar. We, we used to do this with X minus the pop mean gave us the deviation. Well, this will be our sampling error, our point estim, uh, estimate minus the population, and then control enter to populate all of these cells. Notice if I come over here and check, it got it just right, because those are relative cell references. So it looks like we are uh, below the mean. Our, sam our point estimate is below the mean. Same here. Here we're ab uh, above the mean by 0 0.04. I'm going to hit F9, and you can see sometimes we're uh, all above, uh, all above all below, right? So as I take different samples, we get different kinds of sampling error. So the question becomes, if we're going to be doing sampling to estimate uh, things for decision making, 
what are we going to do with the sample error? Is it, wouldn't it be best if we just always had the population data? Why do we even do samples? Well, you don't have the population data. Most of the time, it's just not possible. So you have to deal with samples. So we have to deal with the sampling error. Uh, is the sampling error too big? Is this point estimate a good estimate? Well, the uh, next three chapters, we will spend uh, learning techniques to find out exactly that. So uh, that was a little bit about sampling, point estimates. When we come back, we'll talk about the sampling distribution of X bars, which will help us deal with sampling error and deciding whether this is going to be a good estimator that's good and that's small enough that we don't, it's not st st uh, statistically significant. All right, we'll see you next video.